of you this year had a security nightmare. Licht, bitte, sonst sehen wir die. Lights, please. We won't see you otherwise. The question was who had one, not who was one. Again, with lights on, who of you had a security nightmare this year? So few people, I won't believe that. And with whom of you was it the parents-in-law? Und wer war sein and who was his or her their own security nightmare? A oh, few people are admitting it. All those using Facebook know that it would have to be you. You would have had to show up. Okay, Ron and Frank, security, security nightmares just like every year. Let's go. Hello. Hello, Hamburg. Hello, Hamburg. Moin, moin. Wir sind immer noch da. We are still here. 16th event at the 32nd Congress. Now, I would like to say that that had been the plan all along, but we don't think so far ahead into the future. The remarkable thing, though, is that we have a 30% market share. Who belongs to the church of market share? There was one there. Okay. Okay. Can someone calculate how long it will take for us to get to up to 90% or if we will ever reach that? Was? 160 years. Okay, we have some plans for that time. But until then, we may be able to upload our con 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 uh, consciousness somewhere. And if no one forgets the crypto key for that, uh, if nobody patches the quantum computers. Right. So, welcome to the Congress. I hope you had a good time for Christmas or that what other people call the year's support marathon. You were able to relax and who of you was able to <laughs> delete a Windows XP at the family? Get rid of one. Those are the real heroes. Uh, who was not allowed to get rid of one? Oh, oh. oh dear. Who failed in getting rid? Who failed getting rid of one at the company? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we can now stand up and leave. Get up and leave, can't we? Oh, fossile Betriebssystem. Oh. <laughs> Ancient operating systems 300. Some Windows 90 something. Uh, I found two boxes clearing up this, this uh, month. One of them was MS DOS 3.3, I think, and the other was OS 2. Ich habe sie beide behalten. 1.3. I kept them both. Es, es ging nicht, ja. I, I just couldn't. OS2 warp, I could bin, but 1.3, no, impossible. Okay. Who of you was at the camp? Both translators were. <laughs> well, some was digging into old talks, someone, from the first camp, which was 16 years ago. And I speak about search engines there, which is very, very funny. I ask into the audience, who of you knows Alta Vista? Everyone, yeah, yeah, right. Who, can, who knows Northern Lights? And now I'll ask you, who of you knows, knows Northern Light? Oh, well, a whole dozen. <laughs> and then I stand there and say, there are these new concepts now. One of them are from a company called Google, and everyone, who's that? 
Also, Zeit. So, travel in, uh, time travel. Wir sind wieder hier. Wir haben We're back here. We have the agenda, as always. We have security nightmares that we'd like to have, because they might change something, and those that we do not want to have. And of course, we don't mean everything seriously. And having to say that, that's, do we have to? Okay. Yeah, sometimes I think we do have to. Sometimes we are quite early. This year, BBC, the BBC reported after the Jeep hack that there was a company uh, that had a proof of concept in their lab, uh, nothing to be seen though, that via DAB, that radio thing, you could uh, get into the CAN bus and the entertainment system. And that, I think, was on this stage, well, not on this stage, but in this event. Uh, it was demonstrated 13 years ago, but using RDS at the time, not DAB. Who then this year was in trouble with their fridge? Does no one of you use Google Calendar in their fridges? Uh, that, that, I think, was the number one complaint uh, by those that had a fringe connected to the Internet because Google changed the APIs. Now, who of you has a fridge with Ethernet or wireless LAN? Wow. There were more of those last year. What happened to those people? I think the key word here is Soylent Green. <laughs> yeah, they were, able, they were not able to read the calendar entry for this event and forgot clicking, on, clicking for a ticket. Now, who had a problem with radio-controlled sockets? Half a dozen? Who had a problem with Zigbee? Who still knows what Zigbee is? Ah, yeah, that's quite a lot. Right. It does exist. And who heard at home, Papa, I wanted a drone for Christmas? And who then responded, my child, we just go into the park and kick against the tree tomorrow? Now, who responded to a qu who asked about personal airspace defense last year? And the question now is clear. This is how what it looks like. It would have been maybe that it'll be something for next Christmas for the small brother, picking drones in the park or something. Yeah, picking drones in the park. Uh, there was a, a song, Poisoning Pigeons in the Park. Uh, Tom Lehrer in German by Georg Kreisler from Vienna. So that could be redone for drones. And then review for, to 10 years ago. 10 years ago, the topic was the 2006 World Cup, Football World Cup in Germany, men's football, I should say. And then we were we were joking about the security uh, hassle, the security charade that was being played with security cameras and all, all kinds of things. Now this year in Hamburg, uh, the Olympic Games propaganda took place. They wanted to apply to host the Summer Olympics in, I think, 2024. So if you saw posters there where father and son were pictured with a bicycle helmet grinning into the camera, and you then have something like, the Olympics is good for infrastructure. And if you live in Hamburg and, and go by bike, by bicycle, you were so angry, so angry. But, well, that's not what they meant. Why were they wearing those bicycle helmets? Because the drones falling from the sky? Yeah. Or under small parts, right? In London, they had the, this, this airspace defense. Um, this, 
at the Olympics if they had at least been honest and said the Olympics finally a flag on a bunker at Heiligengeistfeld, which is a large open space very close to this Congress. So sah das in London aus. This is what it looked like in London. This is the Olympics in 2012 in London. That's why they were wearing bicycle helmets. You just didn't understand the poster. Right. Uh, on residential houses to rocket launchers on residential house roofs. There were a few nice cartoons about this too. But then uh, the whole thing, the Olympics bid, was voted down in a referendum, so. And also in 2005, there was RFID Tupperware, wasn't there? Plastic boxes for a fridge that uh, blocked RFID signals. Surely we thought there'd be a demand for this, because sometimes with an intelligent, you have to smuggle things past an intelligent fridge. Uh, you know, if the intelligent fridge, uh, the smart fridge, talks to your health insurer, this guy has bought baked beans yet again. Oder or um, what does that half kilo of, of beef do in, in, in here? It's not good, is it? So Tupperware that shields RFID. Uh, uh, that was in the business ideas, business models category for what was then the next year. And I think the Tupperware company did not pick this up, which is disappoints us hugely. But it's, of course, not a problem at all to uh, to get RFID bags and purses for, um, for your passport, your ID card, and all these things. You don't have to fry them in the microwave anymore, which we liked. And uh, we then thought, what about tinfoil hats? Uh, an uncharted business area? Nothing happened there. OK, meanwhile, there were treaties, uh, treatises in the, on the internet uh, that said it's wrong to buy your tinfoil hat. You had to make it yourself, because you wouldn't otherwise know what's in them. I think at the camp, uh, there was a workshop. But the problem is, uh, the uh, scientists have determined that tinfoil hats are problematic because they make those dangerous rays focus on the brain. But those that then went ahead just didn't get that message. Those that ran a Kickstarter campaign. This is what a tinfoil hat looks like if, what, once it's finished. It's, the campaign is still going on Kickstarter. So now, seriously, it's quite chic, isn't it? Right. <laughs> what? Well, maybe it will lower your average head temperature by 0 0.01 degrees. Is that a good thing? I don't know. Well, it's a fact. Um, war, war flying. War flying, Wi-Fi, long distance Wi-Fi in airplanes was another topic in aeroplanes. And uh, then this year, the whole thing went through the press again about planes that could fly si could be f made to fly sideways. And that wasn't even with Wi-Fi in the plane. That guy, I think, just grabbed the cable on the floor and put it into his laptop. And Frank said, you shouldn't touch flight control devices. Peer-to-peer -peer -peer and firewall worms. The respectable ones. Did anyone see any? You asked it the wrong way. Do you know anyone that has seen? OK, we won't ask for a friend, but after or for a friend. Uh, asking, <laughs> difficult to translate. Um, so I'm passing over. <laughs> Question from the audience. Micro. Okay, also the Kurzfassung is, es gab einen Wurm für Short, uh, there was a worm for ubiquity routers and uh, were sessions and with the flash. With they play with flash and uh, okay, it's not too long. Good. Takes too long, so. Also, 
microphone. Go to the microphones if you have, have the same, something to say. Okay. Um, good. Yeah, also well, well, it's open. There's P2P worms. There has to, it still has to happen. Then uh, proper malware routines. And that's quite interesting what has happened, uh, was got through there. Um, the malware routines uh, have worked to crypto locker troll drones. Um, they uh, they uh, are often, uh, in the, often in the news, you catch them, then they encrypt your data, and uh, after being finished, they ask, they tell you, if you want to have your data back, send Bitcoin to that address, Encrypt them, encryption as a service. That's the new, my, the dog has eaten my homework. But actually it's uh, the same as Microsoft does, key backup, somewhere else. I'm not sure if you think um, I'm not I'm not sure they like that you explain why Windows 10 is for free you just got to see it from marketing uh, view uh, captive marketing uh, everybody encrypts their hard disk keys in Microsoft and uh, next uh, year 12 months well Microsoft says well well we thought about it as $99 a year and and for that, you can have your hard drive key back. Captive markets. Captive, captive markets. We can hope that Microsoft is uh, well and alive for a very long time. Because uh, who knows? Maybe they will never do it. But the um, but the uh, bankruptcy uh, handling, uh, you know, um, they they have a, they have to. Uh, Generate profits. So the crypto, these lockers have the seal of pro approval from the MPI, and the FBI said, "Well, if you have one, they'll just pay," because the average customer uh, ha happiness is uh, high, and uh, you can really get the key back. And if you have a look at it, um, what happens from the malware analysis uh, company? Um, they say, um, if you lose your key, well, there's. Uh, a lot, you get a lot of uh, fuss with the other um, uh, with the other uh, players in the market because they're. Um, uh, the, it's a it's a market that works. It regulates itself. The capitalism works there because uh, yeah, you get. It's uh, technically really interesting how they work. The private key uh, you would need to. Uh, in, uh, Unlock the data uh, is on the com on the hard drive. You, they do public key uh, cryptography uh, and this is the symmetrical keys on the computer. And um, the question, question I asked myself is like, is it transaction safe? Have they thought about the fact that the customer satisfaction is the highest uh, good? If the customers don't aren't happy, then other people come and kick your door down. The customers, but the uh, other ma people interested in the quality of the market, then it's uh, very important that uh, you uh, first encrypted things with a symmetrical key after uh, already having sent the uh, key to the command and control server, um, so that things can be uh, un uh, decrypted. So that's quite interesting. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> Um, so we have uh, fun with e-government online forms. Uh, we predicted that. Not quite sure uh, how many of you uh, have been have been. Uh, GE is at the broadcasting fee collecting service. Uh, yeah, uh, not registered there. So in Berlin, you don't get. The, the the appointments at the company, at uh, the, uh, the local offices, they, there's a company that scrapes uh, the Berlin e-government website and uh, take, takes all the dates and uh, appointments and then sells them. If you want to go there and uh, want to have a new uh, passport, uh, 
you don't get an appointment. It's not there. It's not available. You can go there and at, at six in the morning with all the others who don't get an appointment. Um, uh, the, all the the government has been privatized. Uh, has been turned into market. If you want a market with a timely dependency, if you want one in the next three days, it costs more than uh, one in the next two weeks. So people don't get, uh, so people even get uh, threatened with uh, fines because they don't have a, a personal document and they don't get uh, an appointment and they uh, don't, uh, say they refuse to pay the those thugs, but uh, that's the only way they have the chance they have. So the privatization of e-government, we haven't really foreseen that. We saw that um, this website is sort of semi-offline. So what? Also, then, is there a tool? tool? There was two sniper software for eBay. Das brauchen wir jetzt für uh, now we need this for uh, for uh, public registration offices. Okay. Die, die, um, so the um, um, sewage uh, monitoring. So, 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 so there were so we we were foresee, <coughs> saw that there were sensors that are basically put in the sewers and put in environment and keep uh, for a long time. And I, uh, especially in sewage. Even uh, air sensors are highly complex uh, in the sense of you can't uh, buy just something for 250 um, and put it on the wall and uh, it'll just keep for a year and it's corroded before and it's broken. And I'm waiting for a year now that the people who do safe costs, uh, who built this open data platform for Geiger counters and built Geiger counters and software and so on. Uh, for, uh, built it for Fukushima. Um, they uh, come along with sensors for air, and uh, maybe that's happening something. In the, there's going to be something in the next couple of years, and then I'm pretty uh, excited uh, to hear what is going to happen and what it's going to tell about uh, us about the. Uh, environment and um, tell us things about uh, well, there where it doesn't work with the um, transparency laws and um, you have a yeah for example even air measure thing uh, in the in your uh, hallway and then you get a, an email that says yeah well you should should be uh, you should eat differently uh, well, yeah in Mannheim or in Ludwigs Okay, uh, this was in, in Mannheim or Ludwigshafen near Mannheim, uh, where they have certain security fluctuations. And uh, was it this year that in Hamburg, uh, large parts of the population were called to upon to close their windows because there was this funny cloud hanging above the city? Yeah, so that's what you would like to be able to follow in real time. And the way of dealing with security holes uh, hasn't much changed. There are three kinds of companies, those that ha are surprised by them, uh, then, are the, then those that react professionally and do what has to be done and then fix those holes and communicate properly and talk with the people that find them. And then there's the companies that live an oracle kind of style and, and call their legal departments and get them going in full combat gear and uh, uh, then are angry about bad news. Uh, not much changed. Maybe the ratio of companies that do properly has increased slightly, but otherwise not much has happened. Data wealth uh, wasn't called that in 2005. We just said data bases will go, go missing to the left, right, and center, and that, of course, is not as nice to a, a term as data wealth, which is the same thing. If data will go away, will be will be go astray. But we have to be grateful for the word. Uh, who do we have to thank? Uh, that the company that infected the the, the government or, or the, the the people? They they don't have a copyright on that, do they? They should have <laughs> created one. Great word, data wealth. Okay. 
Now, the Internet Normality Update 2015. Uh, yes, let's just quickly go through that. We have not much time. A few numbers, $81 billion uh, by cyber bank robbery. Um, uh, what are, what's the problem? Bank robberies. They're quoting a popular tune now. 17 million was the highest published phishing transaction. And you'd think, how the hell is that possible? And the thing is that there are enough companies where the guy that uh, does the payments is not the guy who does that directly in online banking. He writes a note to his secretary saying, go ahead and make that transfer, and, and, and she then does that. Right. And uh, this is more than 14 million that someone uh, got out from a lottery using a rootkit. Three million, Three million ransom for a botnet admin. Well, not a, yeah. Which, um, the botnet itself uh, was a choice of use variant. Um, that was supposed to have caused $100 million of damage. So we're, co we're talking about a 3 million bounty, not ransom, a bounty. Uh, and uh, the, the, a, a reward, that's the word, a reward. I'm so sorry. And then there was a headline um, that another 3 million uh, reward was there for the developer of that botnet. That would bring it up to 6% altogether. I'm not sure if, what, if it was the right one. So then the plastic router massacre continued unabated, right? Uh, weren't they all in the press again? Who updated the plastic router at home over Christmas? Not enough people, hardly enough, not enough by far. So the current exploits know about 50 models, and most of these are not very well patched. I have this note at my wall asking which, uh, or listing which family member has which kind of router. And there are some where there is no update available, and so you have to update the hardware, but we'll come to that. Now, the impacts are drawing closer. For example, with OS X, it's now up to 15% in the US. And you can see that this and that security hole was found, uh, relevant malware platforms. OS X is now a relevant malware platform. I was asking why not earlier, because Apple users tend to have more money, so they have, will have to have a, an overproportionate market share. They are more silly, as some other people say. Apple users, so they again they should have an, an overproportionate market share, and I think that in general and with Trojan developers, uh, the, the the cliche that's spread with Malware developers is these are all poor artists. There's nothing to get there. Uh, the symbolic headline for this 500 million Android device is not er not erasable have been sold, are used by people, are soaked, they soak themselves up with data and, and the delete function does not work. You cannot wipe them, not properly at least. With a hammer, yes. Uh, well, I have to say, it's a bit difficult with telephones uh, if you use termite. But hard disk platters, great, very recommendable. Uh, a symb symbolic headline, those are the 500 million devices that are then sold on eBay from, from which you can get the data before you reinstall them and, and then auction the data or whatever happens. They are cheaper on eBay. Uh, the problem is that they are sold on. They don't appear in a drawer, drawer somewhere uh, or are not put into the waste bin. So what is the real problem here? 
Why are they sold on? Well, because you can swap the battery in those old phones. Right? What? Das ist offensichtlich and that obviously is a huge problem. Uh, and you've noticed that Samsung has done something against that. The new model is not available with a replaceable battery. Is that a hygiene factor? <laughs> the audience doesn't care. They're not iPhone victims, I think. Okay. Okay. You're not finding that funny, are you? <laughs> well, I think th this is the operating system where the telecom goes ahead and says, I think we'll switch off MMS, there's a bug there. Uh, so they, they put all the whole network into the um, daisy mode because of some, some bug. Well, switching off all the whole MMS thing, if I had to say something with a telco, to switch off WAP and MMS would be my second act in office just after getting me coffee. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true, yeah. Einbrüche bleiben im Schnitt 200 Tage unbedingt. Break-ins not discovered for 200 days. Now, mind, we are talking about cyber break-ins, of course. A cyber break-in is a cyber thing in the narrow sense, I think. Yes, yes, that counts as in the narrow sense. The time between uh, someone publishing a patch for something, uh, something more or less relevant, and then there is an exploit public in Metasploit exploit of Rover is not days now, but hours. I think we have come We've got to be low 24 hours for relevant systems. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, this has interesting implications. The first one being that if you have, if you're in a large company, you haven't really got time to test the patch anymore. It's more of a case of patch and pray now. That's all you can say. Uh, the company software, whether that still works, well, just just have a brief brief test test, and uh, and if the patch uh, comes at an uh, a bad time such as Friday evening, that's that's sad. And you have to just reduce test time even even more. Uh, if you look at the patch cycles for something like Adobe Flash uh, and enter it into the same graph, you would find that the, the patch cycle by Adobe Flash uh, is getting shorter and shorter and the time from patch to exploit gets shorter and shorter. So there has to be some kind of overlap in the curves. And uh, the one exploit that has not yet been patched or couldn't be couldn't be patched yet because you still had to test whether the app still works, uh, so cancel. Right. Spam has decreased a bit. It's only 49% of all emails now. And uh, to balance that. So malware spam now is up to 4%. used to be 1 in 2013 13 or something, uh, and now it's about 4% of all spam, 2% of all emails have malware. And what I saw first for the first time now are multi-exploits malware, four exploits in a single piece of malware, just like that. You saw it for yourself uh, in, in your own... Well, they were hurrying there, weren't they? I think they just didn't want to send so many emails, you know, not, let's not clog up his email, this, his inbox. And then the environment, it's all, it all costs so that spam has to be stored somewhere. Okay. Okay. Now, now let's, let's speed things up a bit. Now, looking back to 2015, e-government, the US Office of Personal Management, or Personnel Management, um, had a twen lost 22 million files, and I think these were all staff files. Uh, there was a certain uncertainty if it was citizens or personnel or people that applied to be employed, and then it turned out there were fingerprints in there, five to six million. So from five to six million individuals, not five to six million fingerprints, and 
Well, if you then go, what well, stuff as what can possibly be in there, this contains the applications for those that wanted to have security clearance, those working at the secret services, with all the things that they had to fill in there to get their security clearance. So, anything, everything? Yeah. Yeah. That is data wealth. And what do these employees get? They get one year of credit card monitoring. If someone has abused their credit card, well, forget it. That's what China then does with these data. M abuse their credit card data, surely. Uh, completely helpless, right? Completely helpless. Yeah, the crypto wars this year just mind. We're not talk saying crypto wars 3.0. We'll, we've re resolved to use year numbers now. We were thinking for a while if we talk about the crypto wars 2015, should we write crypto wars 3000? Or um, my crypto wars? No, or crypto wars El Capitan? <laughs> I, I do think code names are quite beautiful. Uh, crypto wars Tiger or something? Yeah. So crypto wars. We did talk about in at this event for quite a while. So we'll have to deal with those next year too. We'll come to that. Yeah. Things are clear, I think. Um, we always think we are in a repeat of some bad American serial when you were about 14 and, and, and sick in bed and there were just three programs on TV and, and one of those was running those serial repeats and that's, I think, what those crypto wars feels like. feel like. This is the symbolic image for that. The, the background, I'm sure all of you know, the TSA, which is part of the government, does have backdoors to every suitcase out there. The Transport Security Agency, that's responsible for airport security, that they do have backdoors with those keys. And these keys, in this quality, they held up to a camera. It took about less than a day until the corresponding 3D models for printing yourself or filing into some metal were published. But the TSA th then said, well, we do not really regard this as a security problem because these keys were not really there to secure anything. They're just there to give you a good feeling. We'll skip this. You know what we mean. Cryptocalypse, it's always open SSL, SSH, Blackberry. Yeah. Uh, after Nokia, the next case of corporate suicide in the IT industry. After they, well, the company is not doing so well, is it? And after, for a long time, they position themselves as those that do mobile security fantastically, everything super encrypted also. Uh, this year, the C-level officer, the member of the board, uh, gave an interview saying BlackBerry is very advanced because they do privacy, they have balanced privacy. They, they balance privacy of the users with the security re requirements of the state. So there's no clearer way to say we have a backdoor and we will re reveal it to the government. Pity, the, the only telephone with a keyboard. Uh, but I think that was it. Yeah, and then the story that's private keys left, left, right, and center, up, down, are getting lost. Uh, some manufacturers uh, leave them in the camera firmware, some in the router. Others load them up to Git where, uh, GitHub. Right. In 
pasted example code on Stack Exchange. Great. Uh, just simply no understanding what these things are, and and that's why this this won't stop. Okay, data crime was renamed data wealth this year because uh, it's such a nicer word. Sounds so much more positive, doesn't have all those connotations, progress, optimism, peace, happiness, uh, clear blue skies. Right. Hello, Barbie. Ah, oh, yeah. They received the German Big Brother Award. I believe uh, Barbie or Mattel, was it last year or this year, uh, brought out a camera uh, ah, I keep, I'm, I'm saying it already, a camera that looked like a Barbie doll. Um, a doll with a camera in in the chest uh, that, what? 2010. And, and, and that quite quickly led to quite an uproar and, and it disappeared quite quickly. And now, uh, and then they first uh, had a number of reviews that said, well, maybe it's slightly creepy if the Barbie listens and then speaks with the cloud and can answer the child. A bit creepy, perhaps. And then someone found the privacy agreement that you click on, that's saying that everything is stored and can be translated, transcribed. And uh, I think that was actually a feature. I think the parents then uh, get an email saying what the child talks about with the door. I missed that. Was that a feature? Yes. And the translator confirms it having translated the Big Brother Award speech. Um, and that's where things start. This is quite funny to read if the child then talks with the doll and uh, how was it at school? Yeah. And, um, you know, and if it then starts and the child talks with the doll and says, well, look, Barbie, tell me. Yeah. The harmless things. Why can't we afford a big car, okay? Why is Mama always such, in such a bad mood, okay? And uh, why, uh, if we are very nice this year, maybe we won't get hit before going to bed? Uh, and that's where things start. What do you do with that data wealth? This is what you see in the underground in, in England. If you see something, report suspicious activity to the police. So the question now is, at what which point the Mattel company will be sued in 12 years by the, chi the children that have then grown up to be adults and, and said, you knew, you knew, and you didn't say anything. So if, if I were their legal department, I could not sleep. I think I would not keep the data at least. <laughs> That's what data retention does for you. <laughs> or at least put it into a crypto locker. <laughs> we couldn't evaluate the data, it was encrypted. <laughs> right. Now, this is what Apple says now. We cannot in evaluate the data because it's encrypted, but uh, I think they noticed that they are on a, sitting on a certain amount of data wealth there and, and will probably have to do something. I don't know. There was an interview with the Apple CEO, uh, which is um, the chief operating officer, the COO, Tim Cook whatever uh, he was at uh, he, he used to be at, and he was talking about the apple watch because he is responsible for that and the health kit and health kit is this platform for processing and storing health relevant information in ios and this has been open source by now and they uh, had this corporation with large hospitals and uh, 
different they developed different apps and then said well we have i don't know what the example was but it was uh, uh, some kind of illness parkinson's um where uh, it's better to to know beforehand because you can then stop the disease before it's getting really bad and uh, the nicest scenario then is this is a beautiful scenario and they have data by people from which they know that they have a diagnosis or they know we, they know that the people know that there is a diagnosis and they have data from people that do not know whether they have a diagnosis but they can say the people these people probably have parkinson's so what do you then do with that if you see something say something or do you then not do it because you're then getting sued because they're all getting heart attacks or um something whatever what do they do in iceland in iceland they have a similar problem uh, because uh, the databases there uh, contain a large part of the dna sequence of the population so they can have information about relationships family relationships those that perhaps said we do not want to be registered and they have certain markers about those and i think the change was that they said well we try to involve the the, the people's doctors in in this and let them say dear doctor with this patient it would perhaps be appropriate to carry out tests this and that test difficult topic so interesting ethical questions and i think we're very much scratch, scratching the surface up to now so notable things Good. well <coughs> so <laughs> not clear why they're laughing Oh. Don't know this. So, uh, film images, also hard. With, uh, if you see with, go with companies, you see uh, with company of images, a scene blocker. And uh, a question: If do you know, do you know a company that has ad blockers and company images built? Yeah. 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 Built that who actually uh, fights ad blockers. Do you know a company that has ad blocker in companies that has more than 10,000 employees? Uh, half a dozen. Who knows a company that has more um, employees uh, 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 with uh, ad blockers in the image? Yeah. And like large and medium sized companies. It's a no-brainer. Uh, makes uh, turns on the internet graphic. People don't click on click, uh, on websites that block out ad blockers and there's something for the mental hygiene and um, uh, and and you're about get rid about 80% about browser malware and you save internet costs. And people pay less money. Also brauchen sie People. Uh, don't, yeah, don't spend that much money, so therefore they don't need that much money. It's a total no-brainer. The reuse. There was, we, we have had backdoors in moral systems. Juniper, Juniper was backdoor recycling. Uh, there was a backdoor in it and uh, changed a few parameters and just recycled the backdoor. They're very environmental friendly. If the resources don't have to put that much uh, in de uh, developers to it. Person, uh, the, the NSA thought it was their backdoor, and then suddenly turns out it was someone else's backdoor. And it writes it f for someone else, uh, for for itself. So you, the reality delivers uh, examples. You, so you say you can't really use lose the crypto wars because if something that what happens in reality has some relevance and then you have a look at the current uh, presidential campaign in the u.s and then well you know das hatten wir erst als geschäftsmodelle für 2016. so then we had uh, so first first thought thought that we had this as a business model for 2016 crypto trojans as a service but it, it's already they already exist so it's already 
uh, ten and fab ready, so yeah, there's not much to do. One of the uh, positive trends is uh, that the large company, uh, internet companies, um, uh, except for Apple, um, that uh, also search for bugs at other companies. Uh, well, uh, so uh, if people click less web, uh, they click uh, less. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, so Google and uh, Kao, can you please just fill this up? <laughs> okay. Uh, I heard the rumor in between that Microsoft uh, was only now daring to get involved because uh, they want to have a market share too. Um, right. A gold mine, the hacking team leak. Those that would like to see what is in the arsenal these days, uh, the, uh, look at that. Look, have a look at this. And uh, Rohammer, we do you remember what Rohammer was? You do. Uh, Rohammer, you can you can influence memory cells by using neighboring memory cells, and that was interesting. We always knew that there are things, nice thing, interesting things lurking in hardware, but the way they could that could be used that was kind of funky and surely there's more to come there and then and this is how we exit from this right this is just the amazing thing that was this we give you fifty dollars every month if you have this box and put it into your network at home That looks very serious, very respectable. What could possibly go wrong? And you then think $50 they want to come up with, plus the box, plus shipping, help desk, help desk probably. That just won't calculate. I mean, they steal your credit card, $30. Um, they steal the logins to Minecraft in those games. What's that worth? Another $30. And that just pays for the box, not even the first monthly rate. So it, it doesn't calculate. I think they just won't give you those $50. You think so? You think they won't give me those $50? No. Well, perhaps, perhaps they say, well, it didn't quite work, uh, but we'll plug it in again at your company office. Yeah, very clear. Did you receive the box? Could you put it in the network, right? Okay, we'll have to wait a week to see it work, and that's when we'll send the check two weeks later. Well, the check hasn't arrived yet. Well, okay, leave it in there. The check's in the post. Uh, then, uh, sorry, we noticed we could be, we were able to speak with the box for a short time, but your internet is so bad, you should call your internet service provider and then perhaps you should put, put it, plug it in the company, la la la. And uh, finally, uh, then you have those millions of phishing transfers. But you have a nice little box. But some people try are trying. I'm, I'm, I'm really astonished. Wow. Okay, we have seven minutes left for the whole of next whole of next year, so we'll have to override, overrun a bit. So, the evil hardware category, which of course is the same thing as software, we have talked. We did talk about last year. Uh, we did talk about the, that the fact that devices are sold that are clearly too cheap, for which there has to be a second monetization scheme. So these things phone home and, and give the user's data back. That's just a start, though. Because by now, with these huge devices, of course, you can involve several parties. Uh, let's think of a notebook. Uh, you have uh, the people that buy, uh, that, that build the hardware, the ones that build the interface, write the firmware, the operating system, build the graphics card, and all of these build in their own phone home service and uh, just think of smartphones uh, if you have a standard phone such as Android and, and put in a few apps and leave it lying, running around for a while then the data uh, um, plan is empty quite quickly and and that's 
the way it will go with our beautiful Internet of Things. Now, this development, which is inevitable, of course, because somehow you have to win the price war, coupled with uh, other things such as this, three billion devices run Java. Uh, there are people that printed this, printed the sign out in A3 and and hung it outside for Halloween. Uh, what what's the thing circled in in the graph there with the the uh, word credit card ah so this is all taking place on several levels um, there is this is not patched there is no update function so the there's only one thing that can result from this the internet of dust catchers you know these are those are the those old boxes that have really catch dust and and, and take put on a layer of, of, of ancient dust and you then find some things in there, that, you know, the, the, the bit where the DSL arrives. And uh, the good news here is the power of Ethernet is not something that people... Um, um, and and these, these adapters are so bad, they, they all die too quickly or they, they cause a fire. I was talking to a fireman the other day and asked what are common causes of, of fires at home. Well, the typical thing is cr a kitchen, Christmas tree, children playing with fire, and, and then on that f in fourth or fifth place are those 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 adapters that in in the in the plug in the socket that 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 catch fire. And, and I have a suggestion for the Internet of Dust Catchers: uh, evil networks, net neutrality. We don't have that anymore, not really. So that was that, and uh, it's it will get worse before it gets better. If well, then software defined evil in your computing center. I think I think you are having taken too much a negative uh, view there here. In can you continue to do dynamic segmentation here or whatever? Everyone can. Um, also, uh, you have more things to patch, right? Great. <laughs> exactly. Well, this is reality. In Germany now, with this refugee ID card, these people have become the, the better testers for what the e-government is going to become. Uh, one card for using all kinds of government services has its positive upsides and downsides. And, uh, the interesting question is where the upsides, the potential upsides are. Um, the necessity to have a million or more people uh, go through the education system because this is the only chance uh, that may lead to positive things happening there. I am very much interested in what's going to happen there. And that brings us to the employee citizen life cycle management topic, life, life cycle. Isn't that the same as lifestyle management? Well, on a certain level, yeah. If the lifestyle isn't correct, then the life cycle gets too short, right? Um, is that soil and green that's, that's at the end of this chain? Well, unless, uh, only if you, uh, only if you were a vegetarian, otherwise you don't make as a good soil and green. Now, the e-government thinks that the, what, what makes them out is that they like to choose their citizens. And uh, the question is, what can states copy from from what you can do these days for employees. Employee life cycle ma management is a topic, it's not just a negative one from my point of view. There are interesting papers there from people that say that uh, an employee that enters into a company and stays there for a while and then leaves uh, and, is, and should go by himself or herself and not be fired and should feel good even if they go um, and you have to see what 
things that are possible in companies, in particular American companies or English ones where structures are different, uh, what you can take and use for citizens. There is a certain wastage there and I wasn't there an article this year in Wired about web services that you use in, to which you hand email or your Facebook stream or Twitter or whatever, and, and then they do profiling for uh, for the domestic sphere, profiling for people that you received email from, which then gives you suggestions how to respond. Uh, that's to make it quite clearly clear, clear that you have the can do, must have, go with the extra mile people and uh, respond to those with two short sentences, two exclamation marks recommended. Right, uh, those things. For the home, that's not bad. New business models. Automata ethics or ethic experts, those with a philosophical inclination for the next few years. A very secure job guarantee if you have a certain bullshit talent. Uh, we did have we did say, does, does, is the fridge allowed to tell things? So this is, these are serious questions. These, these people more deal with questions. You have this autonomous vehicle. There's a, a grand granny on the left, granny on the right, a kindergarten in the center. Who will you run over? Uh, so these, these funny constructive problems that uh, from philosophy 101 are then trans transposed and transformed into questions. Now, have you ever been sitting in one of those autonomous vehicles? Have you ever looked at the way the software works? It has one red box for the granny on the left, one red box for the granny on the right, and one box for the kindergarten, and it doesn't run over any of them. And then the other question, these are, this is just, these are just drama and uh, the question whether you kill someone on the left or the right given that you have far lower response times than human beings just ask this question when how many people are killed in traffic each year in germany one every two hours well i think three thousand in a month no. i think it's about one every two hours Okay, so there's, there's some leeway there, but not that much. And, and then there was honey pots, honey nets, honey train. There was a honey train. Uh, someone simulated a train on the internet and then saw how this was attacked. And then there are these funny nuclear power station simulators that you can link up to the internet. No, no, they're all real. That These are all the real power stations, nuclear power stations. Don't ever believe that these are simulations. And uh, <laughs> steelworks simulators, I'm sure that's the excuse of those that, that broke one of those last year, right? And then there is the simulated company or... Um, we had security researchers that complained that uh, the companies that were attacked didn't publish enough about this, uh, the way the attacks took place and such. And the response was they are very, very busy and that won't help them. Just simulate your company and look how that is attacked. Okay. Right. So, Toxfox for hardware. You know, Toxfox has, uh, has uh, uh, an app from the uh, Friends of the of Germany. Uh, you can have a child scan a barcode and then the Pi app tells you what, what if you should eat it or not. Or, you know. so put it in your face or something like that. Yeah. And it's crowdsourced, so uh, they don't... Uh, um, you, know, you can upload the table of contents, uh, it's great features and stuff. And you can write an email to the manufacturers, like, take this out of your... Stuff. And we need that for hardware.
it's uh, if, you, if I wanted to buy pacifiers six years ago and uh, I stood there in the in the shop and I and the, I didn't understand why one company was sold out and the other wasn't the other one was full then it came out and there was PPA in uh, in every in all the ones except for one and you don't need one at uh, you know your electronic store beep oh the router uh, doesn't have a firmware update anymore uh, I'm not taking this one Das ist, das ist keine Selbstverteidigung. Ich meine, wir wollen... Das ist Self-Defense. How do we want to survive the line next Christmas? Piep. Gehst dann durchs, durchs, durchs Heim, ja? Okay, lassen wir das weitermachen. Trendsportarten. Transport, uh, reversing firmware, that's a new unboxing. Is, uh, new, you know the videos, but I bought this, my new gadget. Uh, I have to celebrate this by unpacking it. Jetzt auf, wo ist the, the hacker asks, like, why is he stopping now? Where's the screwdriver? Das, das ist das that is what uh, we see, want to see YouTube videos that stop where the, the, the continue where the unboxers stop. Unboxing, and you take the screwdriver, Pentalope, and the JTAG is here at this point, and then so that's and this, you put this on there, and then you take these postscript and put them to that, and they exist, but they exist, but not enough of them. Didn't get that one. Coupling dating bots. Ah. So vorgestellt. I thought about this before. Like this. Take a dating portal, portal B and dating portal B, and then you put the, uh, I would talk a lot of to the dating box and then couple them. Little Python script not so difficult. And it scales. And my um, um, I swarm intelligence. Uh, I think that, that there could be swarm intelligence coming out of that. This is my assumption. I'm not sure if you agree on that, but yeah. Yeah. The of Silicon Valley versus UK and China. We'll see a lot of that next year. Valley and the tech companies. Uh, so, um, uh, deal with the Brits and the Chinese and the Americans. The China has this law. The UK has this. We uh, have been. Uh, uh, happened to have this. This is going to be interesting. What I want to tell the activists in these countries: go to your uh, representatives. Tell them, listen. If you're, uh, if you. The. Um, Damit leben kannst, kannst du dem Gesetz zustimmen. So, tell, tell representatives, like, if you agree to this law, the guy from the Secret Service, on the way out of this parliament, they're going to take your iPhone away, and if you can live with that, then it's okay. Then have a look at the next year, or the next, uh, the, the following, uh, a company like Apony that positions itself very, very strongly. Um, the question is how uh, they react when the British say, uh, uh, all crypto in uh, in Britain has to uh, uh, have a backdoor. If they go and uh, 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 say, well, oh, we can't sell you iPhones anymore, that's bad. Or, uh, don't close down their companies because they can sell Macs and stuff uh, and a couple of TVs. And we have to had to get rid of thousand employees, you know, make them redundant. And that's the left variant that I can we think about uh, different levels. Uh, if you turn on the the uh, your iPhone, you know, the, uh, it asks uh, where you live, and if you say you 
live in the UK, it says, oh, good, I have to turn off all crypto. Are you sure you're living in the UK? That's another variant. And um, if you want to click on Ireland, uh, there's, if, if you click on Ireland, it's going to be English too. Yeah, that's Manhattan -like um, the Manhattan like project that Hillary Clinton wants to uh, build back doors. The uh, assumption was that Trump also said something like that. We call Bill Gates and all the important people and uh, talk to them, and they then we defined a Manhattan like project not in order to shut down the internet or so. I know it's internet. Yeah. A new internet. And die Türen zuschrauben. Lock the doors of the old one. Maybe they want to pull the, uh, uh, Put a, lock a lock in front, front with keys. It will be interesting in the next year. We wish you uh, have a lot of uh, fun at the, with the machines and uh, hap hap happy new year 1984. Thanks for listening. This was Julian and Sebastian. Uh, if you have any kind of feedback, uh, please we use Twitter and write us at C3Lingo, use the hashtag C3, C3T. Let us know if you listen to the talk uh, in, um, in English. Just write something. Uh, thanks for your feedback. Uh, we uh, love to night. hear from you. Yeah, goodbye. And now goodbye. for the closing.